Glomerulonephritis by Gina Benson, Miranda Fenrich, and Kelsey Liebig. Patient X comes into the walk-in clinic complaining of some symptoms. The patient reports high amounts of urine. His vital signs are taken and it is reported that he is experiencing high blood pressure and a urine sample is taken where blood is found in the urine. Normal physiology. Glomerulus and the nephron. The glomerular filtration. Once blood leaves the heart, it enters the afferent arterial and into the glomerulus. The diameter of the afferent arterial is much greater than the diameter of the efferent arterial because the afferent arterial is taking an unfiltered blood from the heart and the efferent arterial is taking filtered blood from the glomerulus. The pressure of blood inside the glomerulus is increased because of the different diameters of incoming and outgoing arterials. The increased pressure helps force water, sodium, glucose, and urea out of the glomerular capillaries. This is called glomerular filtrate for the filtration of blood. Tubular reabsorption and permeability. This can occur by osmosis, diffusion, and active transport. Most of the filtrate formed in the glomerulus is reabsorbed selectively to the plasma by active transport. Water is reabsorbed by osmosis and the remaining solutes pass through the nephron and into the distal cobulated tubula, which reacts to the amount of antidiuretic hormone. The more ADH present in the blood, the more water is reabsorbed into it and more concentrated urine will be. The less ADH present in the blood, the less water is reabsorbed into it and the less concentrated urine will be. Tubular secretion. This involves substances being added to the tubular fluid. It removes excess quantities of certain dissolved substances from the body and maintains blood at a normal and healthy pH. The substances that are secreted into the tubular fluid is potassium, hydrogen, ammonium, creatinine, urea, some hormones, and some drugs. Secretion occurs from the epithelial cells that line the renal tubules and collecting ducts. Secretion of hydrogen and ammonium helps keep the blood pH normal. The movement of these substances can also help conserve sodium bicarbonate. Other physiological functions of the glomerulus. Permeability. Oncotic pressure on glomerular capillaries is one force that resists filtration, as well as large and charged molecules. The cell membrane of the glomerulus is less permeable to these molecules, which increases the oncotic pressure along the length of the glomerular capillary. And the regulation of blood pressure. Walls of the afferent arterial contain smooth muscle cells called juxtaglomerular cells that synthesize, store, and secrete the enzyme remin. They help regulate blood volume and pressure, deliver plasma to the glomerulus, secrete renin in response to a drop in pressure, and harbor adergenic receptors. Epinephrine or norepinephrine will stimulate the receptors to induce secretion of renin, and the cells respond directly to a decrease in systemic blood pressure. There are a few ways how the disease develops and persists. A few weeks after an infection occurs, excess antibodies used to fight the infection may cause inflammation in the glomeruli. Vasculitis, which is the inflammation of the blood vessels, may cause glomerulonephritis if the inflammation occurs in the kidneys. Underlying conditions such as hypertension may cause malfunction in the kidneys, resulting in glomerulonephritis. It can also be noted that the glomerulonephritis can cause high blood pressure. Glomerulonephritis is the inflammation of the glomeruli capillaries. Due to the inflammation, the glomerulus is not able to effectively prevent macromolecules from passing into the glomerular capsule in the filtrate. Excessive passing of the macromolecules through the glomerulus eventually causes permanent damage to the membranes, which can lead to kidney failure. Because of the leaky glomerulus, glomerular filtration is not able to work effectively, which results in proteins entering into the renal tubules. This causes effects to both the tubular reabsorption and tubular secretion components of the process of urine formation and the adjustment of blood composition. These effects are due to the damage to the renal tubular that is caused by the oversize of proteins which are not supposed to be entering the renal tubular. When there is damage to the basement membrane of the glomeruli, it will affect permeability by becoming more thick and allowing negative molecules, large molecules, red blood cells, and white blood cells to move more freely in and out of the cell membrane. This leads to blood in the urine, which is a symptom of glomerulonephritis. Filtration rate increases as a result of the leakiness of the capillary and the loss of blood cells in albumin during glomerulonephritis, meaning that the amount of filtration rate has lessened. Albumin usually floats through the bloodstream and absorbs water. Due to the loss of this protein, there is extra fluid within the bloodstream. This causes an increase in blood volume, which causes an increase in blood pressure and an increase in urination, which is also a symptom of glomerulonephritis. Glomerulonephritis can lead to high blood pressure, which is a symptom, and results in waste buildup in the bloodstream because of decrease in potassium, sodium, and water excretion. 
three key concepts, homeostasis. It affects sodium, water, calcium, which is deficiency of filtration of the glomeruli, causes bloody to increase in blood pressure and blood volume, and the inflammation of the kidneys and renal functions decreases the filtrate rate, which results in lower immune system function. Three key concepts, cell membrane. The basement membrane damage results in subendothelial immune complex deposition, which promotes neutrophil infiltration and leads to glomerular damage. The cell membrane is more permeable, which is unable to filtrate the substance properly and excrete waste products. This allows larger and charged molecules in and out. Proteins. The cell surface proteins serve as pattern recognition receptors that typically bind in microbial pathogens and initiate an inflammatory response. Antigen-presenting dendritic cells are critical for the activation of T-cells and promoting T-cell-mediated glomerular inflammation. The dendritic cells are hemopoietic. They're located in the kidney and have cellular projections that contact and capture antigens. Upon antigen contact and activation, dendritic cells can signal T cell receptors resulting in the activation of T cells. Patient X is informed that there is no specific therapy for the disease, but treatment of the underlying symptoms is recommended. The patient is referred to a nephrologist and told that there will be continued monitoring of renal function, blood pressure, and urine excretion.